morning. I'm ready. <sighs> oh boy. All right. Uh, I'm good. I'm good. I'm all right. I'm okay. How are you? Are you okay? I'm wearing the same shirt even. I consider this a continuation of last night. Um, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, for this, we got a little uh, sponsor bit here. What is the? I already have done forgot. I think it's um. Oh my gosh. Um, grinding gear games. Yeah, I got a, I got a sponsor here. This is a grinding gear games for the Path of Exile announcement. Uh, more expeditions, Rome, huh? Hmm. Yes. It's just we got a busy. I got a busy schedule coming up, man. Damn. Uh. Let me, uh, I could tweet it out. So follow my tweeters. I'll tweet when I'm going to do it. Follow the tweeters. Exclamation social. Follow that tweeters. And I'll figure out a date. Do more. Time. Follow them tweeters. I, we don't know. We don't know Forsaken. We're going to find out. Hey, you can also follow that Instagram and TikTok. We got lots of content on there, too. Different content. Different stuff. <sighs> oh wow <sighs> we're at uh, 69 signups for HelloFresh 90 is the cap that's pretty amazing 69 giggity a lot of you have been signing up for HelloFresh I, I, you're, just not, you're not going to have any problems with it you're going to love it it's too good In all fairness, HelloFresh is actually real damn nice. It is. I have until the end of the month to get to 90. Works lost lots of weight. Not lots of weight, but I've gone down a little bit. Not yet. Uh, talker, not yet. Yeah. 
Yeah, and we're gonna do a cooking stream on Saturday. I feel like if I did, it would put it over the top, you know, Nick. <laughs> I'll try to figure out something. <laughs> What happens at 90 signups? Uh, I get more booty. This isn't my time slot. I've decided to take on Code Carnage directly. I'm tired of living in fear. The Carnage stream. And I've, I'm gonna attack. I'm going to attack his time slot right here, right now. <laughs> this, this is my this is, it's a surprise attack he doesn't see it coming <laughs> oh man <laughs> oh jeez Why am I up early? Hold on. <sighs> Let me explain. There you go. <laughs> uh, that should help, huh? <sighs> do, 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 do. Oh, good golly, Miss Molly. You know, it's interesting that this brings up an, a valid point. Is that my scene is crooked. <laughs> yes. Um,. Oh, I broke you. Are you okay? Hang on. Is that more straight? Seems better. Yeah. Seems better. Sound panels are going up on February 1st and 2nd. Hopefully the website will be done directly afterward. Then we will do the, uh, the studio tour in here. Um, and that should be that. I'll be done. The only thing that I left to be do, uh, will be, uh, I'll have to get cameras and lights for the, uh, board game room and that's it. But I won't wait to do the studio tour for those. I can just go ahead and just proceed with the studio tour. I'll have to build the uh, table, though.
Uh, yes, the weather. It's going to be bright and sunny. I see the new ad stuff that might be coming to Twitch. No, enlighten me. Can't do any camera effects of being on the ocean. Too much motion sickness for people watching on chat. Damn, the cat, you can't see the captain's quarters thing. Uh. Supposedly they're going to run, give incentives based on how many ads you run. We're not sure if it's true or not, but there are three different levels. Ooh. And we have a war on our hands. Wow. What? I, you know, you trust some people. Okay. <laughs> Link. What's the term? Uh. 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 Leaky mouths sink ships. Wow, chat. Wow. Just unbelievable. This this betrayal. I won't forget this. It was, this was a sneak attack. This was a surprise attack. <laughs> Most of your army already belongs to me. <laughs> that's, that's true. I don't have a defense against that. <laughs> oh, a chain sword that's not fair I've got this thing which you probably can't see uh, I ain't taking that off the wall it's a pain in the ass uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, absolutely, Co. Yeah, it's always fun. I love that drop frame stuff. It's going to be fun to talk about February. <laughs> oh, what an insane month that's going to be. Oh. When am I going to do more Expeditions Rome? Oh, you know. Follow the tweeter. I'll make an announcement when I do. Yeah. Yeah. All 150 year old wood up on the wall. Um, usually, usually it's this is what I have, Co. Uh, boop. You know, not just this, but like. This is something I had one of my mods just kind of throw together. Um, they're, oh man, my thing is messed up too. Um, hold on. Yeah, just that just kind of gives the, a little bit of. Oh my gosh, okay. I need to ask him about that. Let's see if we get to kind of fix that one part. Ah, oh well, I'll fix it later. But anyway, here's a little bit of window depth. And my dad's working on some trim that's going to go along here and give it like an iron paint coating to make it look a little bit better. So it's not quite done yet. It's just like this, the last bit that's coming.
Um, I'm using uh, the same thing I've used for a long time, Co. Uh, it, exclamation mic. That's the uh, the mic setup that I use. It is a very, very nice microphone used by singers on stages. So every once in a while, there's like a little pop, which I'm still trying to figure out what makes that pop sound. But yeah, it's a sure wireless microphone packs. They're great. Yeah, I've, I use them all the time. It's, it's my main microphone uh, for even when I'm sitting out of stream. Because I don't like having mics in my face. No, I am considering getting a boom mic or a shotgun mic right here because we did a cooking stream right in this area. And that was like really nice. Um, and I think like I want to be able to have like people come in and stand here like uh, my dad or something and just have, not have to attach anything to him. Yeah, a shotgun, a shotgun or boom mic or something like that. <clears throat> but it's a nice mic. Serves its purpose. I'd say mods, you know, throw up a link to Co Carnage, but uh, so people could follow him. But let's <laughs> be real, you're all following him anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> right i know dude like this stuff was stupid hard you should have seen the contractor that put all this together he went through uh buzz saws like they were toothpicks man he was like eh. okay throw that away eh. all right that one's dead and then he had another big drill he had to drill. He was like leaning into it because the wood was so damn hard. Hey, see you, Co. Exactly. It's a sneak attack. Emphasis on the word sneak, chat. Gosh. Some of you, man, I swear. Imagine, like, some of you being on the Japanese fleet on its way to Pearl Harbor. Like, calling up Honolulu. Hey! Hey! Hey, we're coming to bomb you! Ha <laughs> ha! You guys hear about that? Yeah, we're coming to bomb you. <laughs> oh, Honolulu knew. Was that, is that the, uh, are you quoting the conspiracy theory that they knew and let it happen? Someone from the Japanese crew would have tweeted it early. <laughs> on aircraft carry Kagi on the way to Pearl. <laughs> Taking snapshots of themselves. <laughs> oh gosh. Any modern warfare thing is going to be monitored heavily by uh, social media for sure. Imagine if you had social media back in, like, the Iraq invasion. Holy crap. I am back. In about 14 minutes, we're going to watch this presentation. Pearl was the obvious target? I don't think so. I think everyone everyone thought the obvious target was the Philippines, not Pearl. Pearl was like a logistic nightmare, they assumed. There were some there were some admirals who thought that Pearl would be could be devastated by a sneak attack or something like that, but the the vast majority of the defense was going to the Philippines. They thought if Japan was gonna attack, it was gonna be the Philippines. That was the obvious target. Because it was right there. 
They were flying, they were flying all kinds of... Uh, MacArthur was uh, sent there to defend it, and they were sending B-17s to defend it. They were sending uh, all kinds of gear, but they said it wouldn't be done until the summer. They didn't actually expect Japan to attack as soon as they did. Yeah. Still fascinating. They did. I mean, I, you know, they've greatly underestimated Japan and their willingness to uh, go to war for what they wanted. But, you know, to be fair, um, it's kind of insane on Japan's part. <laughs> hey! We've been bogged down in a war for four years in China. You know what we should do? Let's sail across the ocean and make another enemy. Let's do that. What? You mean attack the enemy that's at war with our ally to the north? Nah, screw that. Let's go across the ocean and attack them boys over there. Let's make let's, let's form another enemy. Who will also put us at war with two other nations. Three of them. We'll be at war from all sides. Sounds like a grand idea. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you think about that. Like, why would they do that? <laughs> there's, no, uh, there's still uh, people who debate about it today. If Japan hadn't attacked the Philippines, or, you know, hadn't attacked Pearl, and had just seized... The resources in the south that they wanted or needed, right? And just bypass the Philippines? There's no guarantee that the United States enters that war at any point in time. They just don't know. And we'll never know. <clears throat> Join the Discord. Um. Oh, you're doing this too? Okay. Well, you better start your stream. Instead of jibber-jabbing with me. Get that stream going, bud. Oh, yeah. Oh, hey, buddy. Good morning. Here, boot that stream up. I'm already, I'm already in this. Well, I'm on, I'm on Burke Black stream. Best stream on Twitch. Wow. Thanks, man. What? what? I'm just saying. Thanks, best stream bro. On Twitch. Best stream. No, on I believe Twitch. you. I, that was a, that was an actual uh, positive Maybe thing. Maybe streamer that's been sponsored by Captain Crunch. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, you are the best streamer on Twitch.tv. Okay. Like he's getting ready to insult me. No, I'm not. I just really appreciate you as a friend. And, you know, I, I think you're, uh... Burke, you know, I used to watch you, like, before we were friends, before we knew each other. I used to watch you when you averaged. Until like, I found out you were an asshole, life. and then I stopped watching you. No, like 75 <laughs> viewers, man. You you were, I watched you sub 100 viewers, like, every day. You know that shit? Whoa, really? Yeah, really. I didn't know that. Yeah, oh, I've watched you for ages. I actually, Flynn is actually the one that introduced me to you. Um, cause she was just browsing Twitch and she was like, you got to check out this guy. He's like a pirate. And I was the like, pirates. oh, okay. And you were playing. So I don't remember the game you were playing. I uh, bless if this is here. Here's the throwback to how long ago I used to watch you. Okay. Uh, I don't remember the name of the game. I remember thinking to myself, why in the world is he playing this game? No one wants to watch this. It was a game. Uh, you were like a. You were in some tall grass. Okay, think think 10 years ago, okay? You were in some tall grass, kind of a first person person, maybe maybe third person, I don't quite remember. But you were shooting like robots in the grass. It was it was a very simple game. 
I it, graphics were subpar. I don't know how to tell you anything other than that. But it was it was like a two dollar game off of Steam. Huh. I think I think it had I think it actually had robots in the name. Flynn might remember. She's got a weird memory for things like that. But anyways, I don't. Yeah, Yo, you I followed on September twenty fourteen. Yeah, the chat saying, and that was before. That was the year. Wow, dude, that was a year after I started. Almost. Yeah. Yeah, I've been a Burke fan for a long time. Yeah, you know, it makes me so happy that we're friends now. You know, like, you know, <laughs> if you hit me up and you're like, hey man, I'm in a rough spot. I need you to drive down here and pick my ass up i'd be like i'm on my way <laughs> close friends right the difference between a close friend and a best friend yeah, yeah. close friend will answer the phone at four o'clock in the morning he's saying dude i'm in prison i need you to bail <laughs> me out best friend is sitting right next to you in the cell going man that was freaking awesome <laughs> I can't wait to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, people, people. <sighs> Either that or the best friends like on the other end of the call and he's like, you didn't invite me and just hangs up on you. Let's <laughs> yeah. <You know? laughs> oh, I love that uh, old proverb. I don't even know where I heard that from, but I've always quoted it. Sir, you were being hunted. Was I being hunted by robots? Sir, are you being hunted? Oh my God, I actually think that's it. Sir, are you being hunted? Yep, that's it. Oh my gosh. Sir, are you being hunted? I think it's like maybe the second stream I ever watched you play. Hmm. This is actually it. Oh my, how did somebody guess that? There's uh, viewers and channel who just are in tune with this type of stuff, and they just know. There, yeah. this is uh, this is way better. That's why Twitch chat's way better at figuring something out than Google. Mm -hmm. I just ask mm -hmm. the, the the collective, I pull the collective, and it gets me an answer. I I told them some obscure when I was like walking as a young man in some store, and I described some game that I saw, like from my brain of some guy riding a hover skateboard mm -hmm. and he had yeah it was a laser shooter game and you're in some kind of city a sci-fi city an anime game and you have to shoot these guys popping out of windows and stuff who are trying to kill you and mm -hmm. chat was like mm -hmm. uh yeah hold on burke okay yeah here's the game <laughs> here's the game <laughs> there it is uh, i was like gosh dang like i get the most obscure reference I don't think I've ever stumped the chat before. Like I think they usually figure it out. You know what? I've got some. I've got a. Okay, listen. If chat wants to show their true power, I have a. I've got a pickle for you. Mm. Okay. This morning, I'm pretty sure I'm hacked. Okay. I came into my room, and I put on my earbuds. There was music playing out of my earbuds, but yet I had no sources of audio coming from anything youtube wasn't playing steam wasn't open on a random game uh there was no music but there was music being played through my earbuds after about 10 seconds of music being played it suddenly just stopped and i hadn't touched anything yet and i recognized the song and i have no idea what the song is or what it's from but i know i've heard it before oh well, this is an easy one the okay go ahead yeah you're haunted oh okay fuck yeah yeah spotify wasn't open nothing like that now the song itself think of uh diablo-esque uh strings you know kind of like that semi out of tune sound you know what mm -hmm. i mean and it went doom 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 Doom, 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 doom. That's Morse code. And I was like, it's not Morse code. Burn. Yeah, it, it, that, that says, get out of my house. Ah, shit. But I have no idea. Well, I've heard it before and it was freaking me out. I was like, where? 
I, I've got no idea. But my computer was making music on its own. And then it was like, oh shit, he put his head, his earbuds in, turn it off. Never gonna give you up. Okay. Never gonna let you down. Oh, uh, okay. Never gonna run around. <sighs> Love that guy. What a great guy. Oh, oh shit. Oh shit. Chimeras, why are you the first one to bring this up? Did you figure it out? Somebody no. help you? No, no one helped me. Everyone just said you're haunted. Great job, hive mind. You guys are so smart. Great <laughs> job, hive mind. <laughs> the collective. Well, I don't know how to help you with what you just said, because that sounds uh, vague as shit. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, oh God. I kind of hear, I can hear the tune still, man, and it's What if I should just watch it here? I think I should just watch it here, chat. Watch it where? Nope, oh, that's a, dog. Yeah, that is not what I meant to do. Mm, you know what I'm gonna do though? Before this starts, because I have two minutes, I'm gonna order me some pot belly because I woke up and my tummy was all gurgle gurgle. Feed me right now. Shut up, you damn dog! Oh. I had my camera on this. You didn't show up to turn on your camera, Burke. What did I do? Uh, uh, uh. Ah, no big deal. I'll just we'll go over there. I'm not. I'm not sure. I thought I had my camera on that scene. Maybe not. Ah. Uh, <clears throat> All right. Ready for this announcement? I am, but I'm also half asleep, so please carry me. You're half asleep. Yeah. I... Listen, how long have you been asleep? Um, or did you not go to sleep yet? No, I went to sleep. go uh this is sponsored stream by thank you grinding gear games for sponsoring grinding gear games thank you very much for the sponsorship i thank appreciate you. you very much and this is uh path of exiles announcement chat here we go booyah and we go okay they're late oh no they're right on time the world okay at war of the atlas yeah. war for the atlas
Hi, I'm Chris Wilson from Grinding Gear that Games. Looked pretty neat. Thank mm -hmm. you for joining us as we like unveil the game, Planet Exile's next big expansion, Siege of the Atlas. Since the Atlas of Worlds was introduced in 2016, we have released three large endgame expansions, each evolving Path of Exile's endgame in a different way. Today, I am proud to present our fourth endgame expansion, which launches on PC and Mac on February 4th, and on Xbox and PlayStation on February 9th. Twitch drops are enabled for today's live stream, so make sure you follow the instructions below to link your account and be eligible to earn the Wasteland Wings. We've got a lot to show you in today's live stream, so I'm going to cover a lot of ground quickly. We'll start with a trailer for Siege of the Atlas, and then dive into learning about the pinnacle bosses you'll face as you explore the new Atlas of Worlds. We'll then talk about the new way you customize your Atlas experience. Rewards are next, with a focus on both the new itemization and crafting possibilities for endgame items, and the new unique and currency items you can earn by defeating the pinnacle bosses. Then we'll cover changes to how the Atlas works with its new game systems, before revealing the Arch Nemesis Challenge League, which launches alongside Siege of the Atlas. After a summary of what game balance changes we're making in this expansion, we'll have a Q&A session where Ziggy D asks me questions from the community. Finally, we'll post the full patch notes as soon as the livestream ends. Let's check out the trailer for Siege of the Atlas. Hey, running your games. Cirrus is dead. Zana has chosen exile. But the Atlas of Worlds remains a beacon for Eldritch Horrors. We imprisoned the Elder. We placated the Maven. We've been preparing for the arrival of another. But we never expected Thor. They embody insatiable hunger, crushing darkness, searing flame, merciless wrath. If we don't stop them, they will consume everything. This is a war for our very existence. That is a hell of a skill tree. <clears throat> they are here. Stand with us, or we will all perish. Okay. You gonna stand with us, Burke? The events in Siege of the I Atlas take place after the defeat of Cirrus. <laughs> With Zana leaving to pursue her own agenda, <laughs> Commander Carrick has taken responsibility for defending the Atlas and Rayclast against whatever eldritch horrors might arrive. Because Oriath was decimated by both Katava and then Cirrus, Carrick has moved several map devices to an isolated island in the Kurui Archipelago and has established a militia in order to prevent another event like the Cirrus incident. In this expansion, you will join Kerrick's militia and will be asked to scout the front lines of the Atlas for threats. After encountering the Maven, you will learn that two more eldritch horrors like her or the Elder are on their way to the Atlas. Unlike her though, their intentions are driven by the need to consume absolutely everything they encounter. You must learn what you can do about these entities and attempt to prevent the existential threats they pose to Rayclust. In Siege of the Atlas, the two new Eldritch Horrors are the Searing Exarch and the Eater of Worlds. These are similar to other pinnacle Atlas bosses of the past, such as the Elder, the Shaper, the Maven, and Cirrus. You will hunt down these two bosses and their sub-bosses, the Black Star and the Infinite Hunger, 
You will be able to pursue both Eldritch Horrors at the same time, but you can choose which you are pursuing on a map-by-map -map basis. In mid-tier maps, you'll randomly encounter the influence of either the Searing Exarch or the Eater of Worlds. The Maven understands the threat that these Eldritch Horrors pose to her plans. She will modify your map device so that when entering maps, you can choose to add either the influence of the Maven or any Eldritch Horror you have encountered. As you run subsequent maps influenced by the Searing Exarch or the Eater of Worlds, the amount of influenced monsters in those maps increases as that Eldritch Horror gets closer to you. Eventually, you'll encounter either the Black Star or the Infinite Hunger, one of the sub-bosses. You must defeat that boss in order to continue progressing closer to the horror you are pursuing. These bosses have exclusive new unique items in their drop pools. You're likely to have encountered the influence of both horrors by this point and can choose which one you're pursuing in each map. Finally, in the highest tiers of maps, you will encounter the Searing Exarch or the Eater of Worlds themselves. If you are able to defeat these extremely difficult foes, they can drop their own exclusive new unique items and Eldritch Currency items, which we'll describe later in the livestream. Once you have slain the Searing Exarch or the Eater of Worlds once, you can then farm them. In order to do so, you must complete a series of Tier 14 or above maps with that Eldritch Horror's influence applied. You'll eventually find a key that allows you to challenge the Black Star or the Infinite Hunger again. As this key to the fight is tradable, it's not a strict requirement that you slay this first boss, but the item rewards will strongly encourage you to do so. After continuing to farm Tier 14 or higher horror-influenced maps, you will receive another tradable key to fight the Searing Exarch or the Eater of Worlds, giving you another shot at their exclusive rewards. The keys to the farmable versions of these bosses can be rolled like regular maps, but with their own mod pool. This allows you to control the difficulty and rewards even further. Earlier, I mentioned that maps can be influenced by the Searing Exarch or the Eater of Worlds. Before we move on, I wanted to go into more detail about what that actually means. In influenced maps, as you defeat enemies, altars themed around the Searing Exarch or the Eater of Worlds occasionally appear where you kill those enemies. These altars give you the choice between two options that can either modify your character, influenced monsters, or the boss of the map by increasing rewards but also increasing difficulty. You can encounter multiple altars per area, so sometimes you can drastically affect the difficulty and rewards of a map as you play through it. It's also fine to ignore it and choose not to increase the difficulty and reward of the map if you feel that it's already that challenging so enough. Uh -huh. An example of a modification is altering the map boss so that all of its damage shocks, that does look cool but there. also causing it to drop an additional Eldritch currency item as a reward. We'll explain what these new currency items do later in the livestream. In the last iteration of the Atlas, you needed to use Watchstones to both unlock new maps and raise the level of maps across your Atlas. This required grinding conquerors and managing the optimal placement of 16 different Watchstones. In Siege of the Atlas, we've removed Watchstones and have restored the hidden maps back to the base Atlas so they don't have to be unlocked over time. We've added much of the power from craftable Watchstones to Atlas passives so that you can still access the benefits you're used to without the busy work of managing Watchstones. Despite the era of Watchstones being over, we do really like the ability to raise the tier of maps on your Atlas, so that eventually all of them are tier 16. To this end, we have introduced Void Stones. You can earn up to four of these, one each from the Uber Elder, the Maven, the Searing Exarch, and the Eater of Worlds. Placing Void Stones on your Atlas will raise the tier of all of its maps, eventually making them uniformly tier 16. In Siege of the Atlas, we've removed the concept of Atlas regions entirely. <clears throat> this means that we're saying goodbye to regional Atlas passive trees and hello to a single gigantic Atlas passive tree. Holy crap. Ah, uh, good old Path of Exile. Uh. This new tree has over 600 passives available to choose from, and you can earn 117 Atlas <laughs> passive skill points by completing your Atlas. Reminds Each me of Final Fantasy X, you know? The, the orb, the sphere grid. Grants you one skill point. You can also earn some extra ones by completing the Maven's multi-boss fights. Whenever you allocate an Atlas passive skill, its stats apply to every map. The amount of Atlas on puns atlas. that my chat keeps making also, is ridiculous. because it's much faster to complete oh, earlier boy. maps on the Atlas, your Atlas point acquisition is pretty front-loaded, letting you quickly establish an Atlas layout that helps you find and profit from your favorite content. We've integrated some skills from past regional Atlas trees and have created several new ones, like Secret Operations, which turns some of the strongboxes you encounter into a new type of strongbox that drops scarabs. 
corrupted gaze causes abyssal jewels to sometimes drop corrupted with five or six modifiers rather than a typical four. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Scarabs. Ghastly devotion guarantees that areas that contain ritual altars will always contain four altars. Having one massive atlas tree means that you can deeply specialize in certain types of content without being limited to what was available in a specific region. You can increase how often you encounter your favorite content and can adjust how challenging and rewarding that content is. The removal of atlas regions means that you have more freedom to run the maps you like without being forced into regions of the atlas that are passives that affect the content you wanted to play. The topic of map drops is also important here. Powerful characters are capable of playing very juiced maps, which results in them finding a lot of items, including more maps. Often, they get more maps than they actually need. Weaker characters have to be more careful with what mods they add to their maps and hence find fewer maps. This new Atlas tree lets you choose how much you want to invest in a map tier upgrade that used to be the Atlas completion bonus, which means that powerful characters who don't need extra maps can instead focus those points on improving the rewards from content they play. On the other hand, weaker characters can invest in finding better maps and can then respec this later on once they're finding a surplus. We'll make the full tree available next week so that you can start planning before Siege of the Atlas launches. Every to me, large it sounds like they just made the replayability wider for everyone. To create the everyone. most powerful items in the game. That's, that's how Siege I of the Atlas that. introduces a new endgame item mechanic called Eldritch Implicit Modifiers. A problem we had with the old Shaper, Elder, and Conqueror mm -hmm. influence system was that while the items were extremely powerful, they had to be crafted using highly specialized and complicated methods. A regular influenced item you found on the ground usually wasn't of much value unless it was a certain base type at a specific item level. Influenced items were generally not that useful in early, mid, or even most high-end maps, as they were basically a post-end game feature. Our new system of Eldritch Implicits allows you to apply Eldritch mods to already good items that you have, so that you have a lot more freedom to choose how you create your best items. You can also start interacting with Eldritch Implicits much earlier in your mapping experience. As you know, Path of Excel items can have an implicit mod that either comes built into the item based on what type it is, or can be modified with systems such as Vile Corruption. Eldritch Implicits replace existing implicit mods, but with a twist. An item is allowed to have one Eldritch Implicit from the Searing Exarch and one from the Eater of Worlds at the same time. These Implicits have many different tiers and several ways to interact with them. <sighs> While playing maps in Siege of the Atlas, you may find some new currency items, Eldritch Ember and Eldritch Ica, corresponding to the Searing Exarch and the Eater of Worlds, respectively. These currency items can be applied to gloves, helmets, body armors, or boots, and overwrite the item's regular implicit mods with new ones from two special pools of powerful modifiers. As I mentioned before, an item can have both a Searing Exarch implicit and an Eater of Worlds implicit at the same time. Applying the same type of orb multiple times will overwrite the appropriate mod with a new random one. These gloves have a single Eldritch Implicit mod which grants you the ability to gain Rage on hit, rate limited by a cooldown. There are two Eldritch Implicit mods on this helmet. The first one simply grants some added fire damage with spells. The second Implicit causes enemies within a radius near you to be unable to regenerate life. Each mod has six tiers of power. The first four tiers come from the four versions of the Eldritch Ember and Ica currency items, while the highest two tiers can only be upgraded to with a special item we'll explain soon. The first tier of Eldritch Ember or Ica drops in all maps and means that any important build-enabling mods are available without having to complete the entire atlas. The second and third tiers come from exploring maps influenced by the Eldritch Horrors, and the fourth tier drops from the Searing Exarch or the Eater of Worlds themselves. You may be wondering how you get access to the 5th and 6th tiers. This requires some luck and planning. The Maven and her encounters have a chance to drop the Orb of Conflict. When used on an item with two Eldritch Implicits, the Orb of Conflict lowers the tier of one Implicit mod and increases the tier of the other. This allows you to manipulate the balance between the two types of Implicits. <clears throat> the best possible outcome is to have a tier 6 and a tier 4 mod at the same time. In order to achieve this, you'd want to apply the highest Eldritch Ember or Eldritch Echo over and over until you Is have a tier 4 modifier notes? that you want. This will be on then the use test. Orbs of Conflict to try to get it to tier 6, before using more Ember and Echo to lock in the tier 4 mod of the other type that you're looking for. We have made sure that the power of these modifiers is available earlier in maps, so that you get access to them when you need them, rather Jeez, than after good. you need them. 
Also, Crazy none of the new Unplus mods have item level restrictions that prevent them from so being Burke, I had to item. blink. Can you, uh, can you give me a quick of recap of what I just missed? Mods that are only enabled when specific numbers. types of enemies are in your sorry, presence. What? Numbers. These ramp up. Oh, okay. Powers, numbers. Got it. Gets more restrictive. These conditional mods are designed for players who feel that they have sufficient clear speed for easier monsters and want to specialize in being even more effective against the really tough bosses where it matters. Items with Eldritch and Plusets can also have a property of being dominated by one of the Eldritch Horrors. If an item has a higher tier Searing Exarch mod, then it is considered dominated by the Searing Exarch. Conversely, if the mod for the Eater of Worlds is higher tier, then it is considered dominated by the Eater of Worlds. Burk, clap, burk, clap, burk, clap, burk, clap. Domination matters for three new currency items we're introducing. The Eldritch Chaos Orb will reroll the prefixes of an item if it is dominated by the Searing Exarch, or the suffixes if the item is dominated by the Eater of Worlds. The same is true for the Eldritch Exalted Orb and the Eldritch Orb of Annulment, which add or remove a prefix or suffix depending on which horror dominates the item. These very rare currency items give you a large degree of control over your endgame rare item crafting if you're able to manipulate the Eldritch Implicits correctly. It's important to note that you can't apply Eldritch Implicit mods to influenced items. By that, I mean items that have the old type of Shaper, Elder, or Conqueror influence. The Siege of the Atlas expansion <laughs> contains a, a whole bit, roster of new unique items, which drop from the four new Atlas bosses we have introduced. All of these are powerful uniques, and we'll show you six of them today. The Ashes of the Stars Onyx Amulet increases the level of all of your skill gems and grants them an additional 20% quality. It also improves the reservation efficiency of your skills and lets you level all of your gems faster, which is really useful for gems such as Empower and Enlighten. The big boost to quality is very valuable with some alternate quality gems, as well as Will certain there be a skills test like the curses. List? The Dissolution of the Flesh Prismatic Jewel changes the way that you interact with incoming damage. While you have this jewel equipped, damage is taken in the form of a temporary reservation to your life pool. If you reserve 100% of your life, you die. This allows you to ignore life recovery completely since the actual amount of life you have left is irrelevant as long as you manage the timing of your life reservation. The Polaric Devastation Opal Ring introduces a new debuff called Covered in Frost and gives you another way to apply the existing Covered in Ash debuff. This is a solid ring for anyone specializing in either fire or cold damage. In a similar vein to Covered in Ash, Covered in Frost causes the target to take 20% increased cold damage and lowers their critical strike chance. The Ceaseless Feast Spiked Gloves have a new debuff called Corrosion, which you can stack up on enemies to remove their armor and evasion. This is not only a great way to reduce their physical damage reduction, but the gloves also have an additional bonus that applies when you have stripped away all of the enemy's armor or evasion. As a reminder to everyone watching, this we game is free to play. You don't have to go crazy detail. Unique jewels. Mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. flame, numbers and stuff. Flesh. You just get in there and just play and have a good time. He's going over all of the bosses, updates and, and changes, unique in the you know, that uh, um, like make your in-game character and all that stuff. You know, the ones and zeros of max level character and all that stuff. And also changes through the base game because of the expansion. Yeah. If, if you, you love theory crafting and you love min maxing, this game is a white flesh jewel that specify yeah. the same skill. And if you meet the class requirement, then you will be granted that ascendancy skill. For example, if you are a dead eye and find a forbidden flame jewel that specifies the master surgeon skill from the Pathfinder class, then upon finding and equipping a matching forbidden flesh jewel, you will gain the master surgeon skill. These jewels open up many new build possibilities for very late end game characters. The favored map system allows you to find more of the maps that you want to play. In the old Atlas, there were three favored map slots available to unlock in each region. Now that regions have been removed, favored map slots can be unlocked by meeting various objectives like completing a tier 16 map or defeating an Elder Guardian. There are 12 favored map slots that can be unlocked. Holy These cow. apply to all map drops on the Atlas, rather than affecting map drops in just one region. Each slot provides a 10 times multiplier to how frequently it's corresponding map drops relative to other maps. You can select 12 different maps as your favored maps, or you can put the same map type in all 12 slots for a massive 120 times boost to its occurrence in your drop pool. This is particularly powerful once you've socketed all four void stones into your atlas, making all of your maps tier 16 and with 120 times multiplier applied to a specific map. In this case, the specific map you have chosen will constitute over 50% of all tier 16 map drops. Sextants can be found from tier 14 onwards and are applied to void stones. When you use one on a void stone, it affects your whole atlas. 
Because void stones come from the highest tier content, we've removed simple sextants and prime sextants, as they can no longer be used when you attempt to You know what that thing is, right, Van? We've added the mods from these sextants uh, to the pool of mods that awakened sextants ship? have. Because this dilutes the pool of mods, yeah, you know, we use it in Atlas. Role, we've increased the frequency at which you require awakened sextants. Yeah, no, the, the, Your the existing star map prime thing. Sextants will be converted sextant? to awakened yeah, I know what sextants a sextant is. at the launch yeah, of Siege yeah. of the Atlas. I have a sextant. We yeah. have made no changes to elevated sextants. I had a sextant last night. Wow. With the new Atlas system as context, we have done a balanced pass of all sextant mods. This resulted in a slight reduction to the amount of content or monsters that a given sextant mod introduces to an area. We've removed the Nemesis Monsters Drop 3 Additional Currency Items mod, both because it's busted no, actually, somebody and because bought me it's incompatible with our future plans for the Arch Nemesis <laughs> League content. We've also added a whole bunch of new Sextant modifiers. Seems like that thing would be, uh... The general intention behind I'd be these crazy new mods to use is one of those a strong things. benefit <laughs> while adding extra difficulty, or reward players for specializing into having other leagues present in an area. For example, there's a Sextant mod that ensures that all breaches in an area belong to Chayula, so if you can maximize the number of breaches through scarabs, map device modifiers, the atlas passive tree, or other sextants, then you've got a whole bunch of valuable Chayula breaches in that map. With the removal of watchstones, players would have lost the ability to swap in and out watchstones with different sextant modifiers on them depending on which maps they were running. We like the strategic use of sextants, so we have reintroduced this behavior with a new currency item called the Surveyor's Compass. This can be applied to a void stone with a sextant mod on it to itemize that sextant mod for later use or trade. This currency item drops periodically and is also sold by Kirik for one Chaos Orb, similar to how Einhaus sells Beastery Orbs. There's no limit on how Her many you can purchase. Thumbs up. Still lurking around here. With Zana gone, you may be wondering what is happening to her Atlas missions. Well, Kirik is taking over from her, but it works a little differently now. Kirik has assumed the position of commander, and he has important missions for you to carry out in the Atlas. You open these missions at your map device and can run them just like before. However, you won't encounter Kirik inside a map, and you won't be able to apply Kirik objectives to a map itself. Because of this, we have raised the chance that you receive a Kirik Atlas objective when you defeat a map boss. Previously, Zana's missions had completion objectives, but with the removal of the favor system, this stopped mattering. Instead of focusing on completion, Kirik missions now focus more on rewards, and so their purpose is to provide you with additional league content or extra item drops. Instead of your free daily mission being based on the last map you've completed, it's now based on the highest tier map you've completed in this current league. For example, if you completed a tier 16 map, your daily missions will always be high tier maps. Kirik missions can now include additional content like conquerors, ritual encounters, expedition encounters, and even monstrous treasure, the former prophecy that makes an area contain 24 to 36 additional strongboxes with no natural monster inhabitants. Kirik now sells you maps, much like Xana did in the past, except there is now a wider variety of outcomes with variants on the prices, so you should probably go and check what he's selling more frequently in case there's a good deal. The items in the window were re-rolled under the same conditions as Zana's previous. Yeah, you don't have to worry about this much Kirik information chat. You just, just get in there and play and just have a good time. Content. Yeah, for example, absolutely. And we'll keep chatting. Like, some people in chat are like, I have to be a mathematician well, to understand this game. <laughs> like, no. <laughs> as you play through uh, do maps, I have to have a degree? No, no just start playing. Essentially, He's just you going into detail about it. Missions from other people who scouted the Atlas and didn't survive. These items can be used like a currency item to re-roll the set of mission maps that Kirik is offering you. These new maps have a different set of mission outcomes that includes valuable ones like guaranteeing a unique map, having all maps be corrupted, always including a Shaper Guardian, Elder Guardian, or Conqueror, having only uncompleted maps available, or adding a Breach Stone to the selection. The value here is not only the re-roll of what is offered to you, but also the guarantee of one or more high-value missions. On the Atlas Passive Tree, you can specialize into finding more Atlas Scouting reports or unlocking new types that can drop. Kirik also sells the aforementioned Surveyor's Compass used to itemize sextant mods, as well as everything else Zana previously sold, like specific divination cards. You guys know how some Despite games, them not being they don't have enough Atlas content to get really anymore, bored. It's still possible to fight Pewee Cirrus is and not the Converse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got content rewards. for days. Tier 14 or higher yeah. map bosses now have a chance to drop maps influenced by the Shaper, the Elder, or a random Conqueror. You can also purchase these maps from Kirik. When you enter the map, you'll be met with hordes of influence monsters that can drop influence items. Upon defeating the map boss, a portal will open to the Conqueror's arena. Upon death, the Conqueror will drop a fragment. Each Conqueror has their own fragment. Combine all four fragments in your map device to open a set of portals to the Cirrus encounter. 
As it's now harder to get influenced items, we've moved plus level gem modifiers into the global mod pool for amulets. So it's now possible to get the powerful plus two levels to certain gems without having to use influenced amulets. Now that Cirrus and the Conquerors are no longer core parts of Atlas gameplay, they will not drop awakened gems. These gems can now drop from Maven invitations. Arch Nemesis you, is a challenge league that reinvigorates fights with rare monsters. It introduces around 60 new monster mods and allows you to customize your rare boss fights to control your level of risk and reward. These mods can be combined in over 35 recipes to create new, more powerful and rewarding mods. As you play through the league, you'll discover more recipes and learn how to best utilize them to get the most valuable rewards. When you slay regular rare and magic monsters in the Arch Nemesis League, they sometimes drop an itemized version of a new Arch Nemesis monster modifier. You store these in a dedicated inventory panel so they don't clutter your regular inventory. Over the course of each area you play, you'll encounter four monsters that are frozen in place, petrified and bound to an Arch Nemesis statue. When you find such a monster, you can free it by empowering it with an Arch Nemesis mod. If you're able to successfully defeat the empowered monster, then you will receive the fixed reward that corresponds to that modifier. The trick that makes this league awesome is the four petrified monsters per cool. area. Mm -hmm. You see, the mods you apply will accumulate as you play through the area. When you empower your second monster, it also has the mod you applied to the first monster. This results in a fight that has twice as many dangerous mods and twice as many rewards. Even though you receive the reward from the first mod when you kill the first petrified monster, you receive a second reward of that type when you kill the second petrified monster. The same applies to the third and fourth fights in the area as well. By the time you defeat the fourth monster, you'll have received the first reward four times, the second reward three times, and so on. Take care when picking what order you consume your mods so that you can maximize your rewards. Hmm. More than half of the available mods are created by combining other mods together on the same monster. As an example of how this works, if you apply both Incendiary and Hasted to the same monster, then in addition to the rewards that these two mods grant, you will also receive an itemized Flame Walker mod upon killing the monster. And it sneeze and then it faded this away. This can then be applied to that. another petrified yeah. monster later on to complete further recipes. These recipe mods yield substantially more dangerous encounters and have more valuable rewards. Even if you're not completing a recipe with your modifiers, you can still combine them to get some ridiculous combinations of rewards. For example, defeating an innocence touched enemy grants three currency rewards and converts all other rewards into currency. Defeating a mirror image enemy grants a divination card reward and rerolls all rewards three times, yielding the rarest result. Killing a flame walker enemy grants three weapon rewards. Killing a toxic enemy grants a generic reward plus a gem reward. If you were to kill an enemy with all four modifiers, you get a total of nine currency rewards, each rolled three times and dropping the best result. But if you apply the mods in the order mentioned above, then as you kill each of the four monsters in the area, you'll receive the earlier rewards multiple times. Mm. The end result is the equivalent of getting 60 currency rewards and receiving the best 20 plus three regular currency rewards. As you can see from this example, even the basic rewards that offer, say, three random weapons are really useful because you can combine them with reward conversion mods to take advantage of their high item count. I followed that one, chat. <laughs> <We're looking laughs> that one other types of crazy ways you manage to combine your arch nemesis rewards. To prevent you having to backtrack, there are more than four possible locations where you may encounter petrified monsters in each area, but only the first four you encounter can be empowered and fought. Arch Nemesis mods cannot be traded with other players. Your progress is your own. We designed this league to be a relatively simple one to go alongside all of the new Atlas content in this expansion, and it exceeded our expectations. The fights are fun, the rewards are punchy, and there are a lot of tough decisions about which reward combinations or recipes you can pursue. In Siege of the Atlas, our balance goal is to take two very common gameplay archetypes that struggle with endgame content and to buff them so that they're in a much better place compared to other builds. The ones we are targeting are hit damage bow characters and hand casting spellcasters. If you haven't checked out the balance manifesto about these changes like that play? we posted recently, I'd encourage you to I like read to all about mm -hmm. them in the patch notes that will be posted uh, when the live stream ends. Crusader, to be Paladin, clear, this expansion thing. does have a few of the usual nerfs to the most overperforming builds, but for the most part, the majority you? of balance changes are buffs. The goal is Whatever that players who play hit damage bow builds hammer. and hand casting spell casters okay. are significantly more competitive. That sounds about right. Or big I don't know why, but I, 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 I pictured you playing something that had like a wand. Talent. One for flasks and one for gems. 
a side effect of this new is that stash you're set, the most important things in these kind of games <laughs> or gems, i need more bank space purchase the new specialized tabs the gem stash tab allows you to easily store and sort your collection of up to 500 skill and support gems by default it displays all gems stored in the tab but you can use one of the four categories at the top to filter between Ooh, red like green blue mm -hmm. and white gems there's a drop down that allows you to pick your preferred sorting method, such as current gem level, required level, or quality, to easily find whatever gem you're looking for. The Flask Stash tab allows you to store 500 flasks and can be filtered to show life, mana, hybrid, utility, and unique flasks. Dang. You can also use the drop down to change the sort order between item level, base type, and quality. This allows you to quickly find flasks of a certain type, potential flasks to vendor for glassblowers' baubles, or high item level flasks for crafting. Remember that regardless of whether you purchase these new tabs, you'll still be able to set up affinities for gems or flasks. Wait, why is it labeled regrettable purchases at the top? Regrettable purchases. The of Siege of the Alice, we are hosting a competitive event where players will race to be the first to kill a trio of bosses, the Maven, the Searing Exarch, and the Eater of Worlds. The event will take place in the hardcore solo cell found arch nemesis league. We have some interesting prizes in store for the winners. Keep an eye on the news next week for more details about how this event will work and what its prizes are. We're almost at the Q&A, but first I'd like to show you the new supporter packs we're releasing today to help fund development of future Path of Exile expansions. Our new packs are called the Worm and Ember Keep supporter packs. Hmm. Like our recent League packs, there are three tiers available, oh, each cool. of which include points equivalent to the cost of the pack, plus many exclusive cosmetic microtransactions Ooh. like apparition effects, armor sets, weapon skins, forum badges, titles, and social frames. The Worm series comes with an exclusive pet, and the Ember Keep series comes with an exclusive weapon effect. These new packs are in addition to the 2022 core packs that we released recently. Remember to check those out if you haven't already. That concludes the reveal portion of this live stream. Keep an eye on our news next week as we unveil more details about the Siege of the Atlas expansion and the Arch Nemesis League. In the meantime, these reveals are already live on YouTube for you to link to your friends in case they miss the live stream. Please spread the word and join us as we explore the Atlas alongside you next week. It's now time for the Q&A. If you have any questions about what we've shown you today, please get them ready because I'm about to be joined by Ziggy D as we answer your questions from Twitch chat. And after that, we'll be posting the full Path of Exile Siege of the Atlas patch notes. Ziggy D. Why does that name sound familiar? Uh, it does sound familiar, doesn't it? And we don't have to do the Q&A portion. We just had to watch. No, uh, but the first what did you think of all that? Uh, that's a lot of information. There's a lot of in. information. A, a lot of peeps that can be like super overwhelming. I feel know? like they should have done like some cool announcement. And this should have been like, if you want to learn more. Here's well, our did. The trailer segment. was badass. You know? Yeah. The trailer was great. Just a lot of information, especially if you're a lot of information. So trying to I hook guess some new kind people. of clarify that for anybody who is uh, like, I don't want to have to get a, a PhD to play a game. Uh, one, the game is free to play. Uh, two, uh, what they just described right there were like all the finite changes to end game and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and if you if you like min maxing, you like you like doing the theory crafting, you like going down different builds, you know, like it, this game has by far the best system when it comes to that. If you like to tinker and it if you've never played it it's overwhelming for anybody who has played it they are drooling right now over what they just saw yeah so maybe that should be an indication that. ziggy d is a streamer right is he a streamer or a youtuber i got my pot belly mm. i didn't want to eat during the sponsored stream but now that it's here i get to i get to eat my i get to eat my thing you want to see oh, I, I definitely ate during the sponsored stream no oh, i try not to eat during sponsored streams i try to be a good boy that's not being a good boy yeah, no, it's not being a good boy. You just watch it some. It's like eating popcorn while you're watching some. You're eating pop. Well, this isn't a popcorn. This is like a. This is a nice bagel sandwich. You know what I mean? Mm. 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 I'm just dripping all the way up. I don't care. Mm. Mm. It's not that complex, Han. It's like it's like me just sitting you in front of Stellaris you know, on turn 200, you know what I'm saying? And just saying here, yeah. play the game. Like what you just got there was just 
all the in in game stuff, all the crazy stuff. You know, obviously the game yeah, doesn't start a good, you like bad that. Way of describing that, yeah. You know, you 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 start at level one and you play through it. There's, it doesn't. It, you you get introduced to a lot of things slowly, and then they become second nature to you. So it's just like any other yeah. game. Yep. That's a fantastic way to describe that. What just happened, Chad? Is you just got explained to what happens on turn two two hundred of Stellaris? Yeah, that's great. I wouldn't have thought of that. You're so smart, Burke. Not that complex. Yeah, okay. All right. Everyone calls me the dumbass of, of, of the entire streamers, right? I can play yeah. Hearts of Fire and Crusader Kings. I can play Stellaris, no problem, okay? <laughs> so don't give me any of this nonsense. If I can do this, you can do it, Curtis. It's not that big of a deal. <laughs> now, all this stuff is slowly introduced to you. You know, like I just said, you get dropped That's right into it. The level. You know all of this. It's like it's like. Before you're allowed to make a character, you have to take a test. Those are baby games compared to this. No, they're not. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Hearts of Fire and Crusader Kings are baby games compared to this. Give me a break. Wilson, once again, good morning, Chris. Hey, how are things going? Very good, very good. You guys always make our day on uh, Reveal Day. <laughs> we work very hard to do that, yeah. A pretty spicy one this time. However, I do have to leave. Uh, I thought I, 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 I knew, like, that name Ziggy D. I, I thought that was familiar. Man, that Streamer. Is, were those training dummies the militia are using real? Or is it just an elaborate bait? We're getting training Okay, dummies? Burke. Wait, I want to read this from your Sometimes chat. Sometimes to fish, okay, you Burke, need build your bait, own. So I think that's a good analogy build. there. Beat the final boss of PoE, and I'll donate 200 I, I think, subs I think if you that do. Might be another chat. He's down, down and determined to make. <laughs> maybe, I, okay, you're right. Maybe, you're right. Uh, Hearts of <laughs> Iron, Crusader Kings, and Stellaris are just yeah. really dumb. Okay, you know, I'll really easy baby games. <laughs> you're right. Mm -hmm. Compared so, to back, Path back, of Exile, you're right. Post your questions in the chat for our host I'm wrong. Think you're right. My bad. Anybody can play those games. Sure, they're they're simple and easy. Some new stuff in there as well, like such as patch notes coming right after. This time as well, so you guys are ready. You guys are ready. Yeah. Uh, it really helps having to write up a lot of the patch notes for the balance manifesto in advance. That means there, I mean, there's a lot of other stuff, obviously, but it's it's doable. So early manifesto also means early patch notes. I thought early manifesto meant uh, lots of early nerfs, but uh, only a couple this time around. <laughs> uh, it also means early development, which is great as well. That is very good. All right. All right, well, we'll kick things off with... So if we uh, make our build and we kill the and final boss, world changes, that is, that is the big we get 200 subs? Expansion. A big end game update. Um, I think and we I should the, uh, the analyze the, the amount of time very that would probably take uh, to do. Uh, the series of... <laughs> uh, I could probably, it, do, it in a, I could probably do it in a week, so... Does it really, does it really come down to 200 subs uh, equal the value? So the goal is that they're slightly more challenging. We do want to keep pushing. I don't have a week to there. spend on, on any game awesome. right now. But a key thing here is that you can roll the um, some mods on the keys that give you access to them once you've killed them for the okay, first time. So after like the quest completion of it, you then get the ability to farm them, and that involves itemized versions of the maps. And because you can roll mods, of course, it lets you punch up the challenge and reward quite a lot. I'm going to do it all offline, just like in my spare time. And fight. then I'm going to fire so up and be like, hey, guys, here's my guys. Players. That's interesting. How does the scale like, with uh, thank you for the thousand dollars changing that, with uh, so, having like a rare version of them? So my understanding is that the mods can increase the rewards um, in traditional ways with regard to increasing quantity of drops. But I'll just double check to see if there's any other special stuff. So I'm going to do the uh, dev check emoji. Oh, <laughs> that's a record for dev check, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right off the bat. So you know what I really like about Weaver? Scale all of their special mm. drops as well. So whatever they're getting in terms of, you know, uniques and currency that you want. You just what? I hear you. you I asked what? Ah, oh, that's good. Because oh. it doesn't always scale as um, like special specific drops. But they, uh... Oh, I think that's... this is, yeah, there's a specific you know, you can, like, on the item rent mentions the quantity of private it, POE servers. Um, which which helps in this case. Also. So you know how like, they do their seasons and stuff? I, I yeah. That Maven was if the late shift and dark side wanted to get like its own POE server only for our guys, you can do that. Uh, and then really? profitable mates. Yep. For just our community? That, to be a lot that way, so the leaderboards are essentially what so late shift leaderboards like only, or dark side You'll leaderboards probably find only. That if you play the fight for without viewers. It at all, like completely yep. default settings. It's oh, that would be cool to do. I would be against doing I've, that. I've thought about doing it a very, like, I'm not a huge POE guy, but I have enjoyed it. 
but I think that's just yeah. so cool. Oh, yeah, like, hey guys, come play on Dark Side. Bit, bit range, come do your thing. You can you can rent the, servers the, from them, your own shards, well, which sounds like and it's your community to play on. So all the leaderboards, yeah, all like the, the high end stuff, the quest it's progression, only also, your community. Um, on the way that's actually kind of neat. I like that. They're easier, of course. But they still drop good end game stuff, but just not quite as good as the absolute pinnacle ones do. Yeah, I've highly considered doing that. Do any bosses have any memory games? Because I'm not very good at those. I hear players love. I'm not offended, so Curtis. To, Kurt, I honestly Kurt. can't remember if there's a memory. Hit, hit Russ. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know how I get. I just get all worked up. Mark. Uh, so the Atlas is on. Someone said Dark Side Leaderboard, but positions point, one through ten are all tyro. <laughs> right? Yeah, that's exactly what it would be. Down in other areas. Uh, what have you guys learned from previous iterations of the Atlas so far, and how has this shaped the new generation that we're getting now? This is kind of a, is that a free? very no, standard game design that's not lesson, free. but simplicity that costs and fair, understandability that costs pretty matters. Penny, but... but you also don't want to lose any deck. I still think it's and a cool so, idea. To some extent, like what we did with Path of Exile 2's skill gem system, is we've tried to make this more approachable, right? Like when you look at the Atlas now, it's simple. There are just a bunch of maps. You work from top from bottom to top, you know, fighting harder maps, and you don't have to worry about regions. You don't have to worry about repeating work or chasing conquerors around. It's quite straightforward. You don't have to understand the complexities of the watchstones because the new void stones are so much simpler. You just yeah, I would them in way better. I would much lower, so much value, it takes rather a lot of have a hard for players to understand. season and dedicated with just our people it. instead of it just but being a bunch return, of mishmash. You know, I'd love to see like end. user and names so on there. Jammed it all. Be kind of fun. Tree. And but so I recognize, you know, a lot of stuff there. But yeah. players who get that far in Path of Exile are very just, used to yeah, and, and, and adds a new level of flavor to the, to the, the game, decisions they're you know? making. So it if you ever have a really dedicated well, server, you can interact for your game. Odds are, so I'm going to be interested. So much of the rewards of the Atlas now were pushed really early in yeah. terms of you getting Eldritch and Plissets and getting to fight bosses and getting you know good Atlas. I have no idea. Far, far earlier than I know it can get expensive. We felt and agreed with players who were saying that previously it kind of felt like the end game starts. Expedition Rome, follow my Twitter. I'm gonna. Yeah, find, try to find a like, date to get it. I feel like you really hit two things this I'll time. announce it on so Twitter, so and then everybody yeah, that shows so up gets it. That because <laughs> it's the slimming down of the core progression system. So now you just kind of... I'm doing the best I can. As the core progression, right? I did like those you know, initial strains for X. Like, like apparently I got like this... Uh, yeah. And all that sort of stuff to do the core progression. Skull so that uh, is a skin in the game that everybody's wanting. So like I'm... uh Right. Did my simple. initial streams like like two and a half streams so like 20, 25 hours different, of content uh, so that everyone could like on those you know all my viewers got all their skins and, and drops right or all three or and now I've got the penalty for not doing one people trickling in. <laughs> So that's a good question. Why are you gonna do that Where stream for that drop, huh? What's the progression system? Can, can I do the drop? I'll do that stream for the drop. Constantly be yeah. facing bosses to get unlocked the passives. The passive oh my tree God, and that'll you know look at February. It looks so scary. So much, there's so much stuff to do. Just completing the bonus objectives on the maps themselves. Well, I mean, your looks like your March is gonna be pretty busy. Remaining 17 from boss fights and oh goody. So where does she kind of let sit now? Right, in terms of the passive, so I have 17 that? That's come a from creating maps, and then there's an additional mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 15 points. I'm excited, excited so now. 11 so from the Maven encounters. That's official? So that's <laughs> I don't know what you're talking, talking about, Burp. <laughs> and five of them are from the standard invitations. Six of them are from the invitations that were previously called the Uncharted Realms encounters. <laughs> um, there's also four more points that you get from the new siege bosses. So the four um, guys, the Searing Exarch, the Eater of Worlds, the Black Star, and the Infinite Hunger all have a point each upon the time that you kill them the first time. And um, ah. the Maven also has a more defined role in terms of itemizations. She's now the source for Awakened Gems, which of course are as powerful as they always have. Yeah, that's a complete lie. Um, <laughs> they're <laughs> less powerful than they always have been, but as powerful as they were She's lastly. The for getting carried away with the marketing there. Um, she also <laughs> drops the Orb of Conflict, which of course is really important for the Eldritch mod crafting. So if you're wanting to perfect your Eldritch and plus it's, you're going to the need to find shift doesn't bosses, give a crab so J-Pan. They're like, this is a, this is a Burke month, month more than anything else. Year. Well, I mean, I shouldn't say that because, like, it's a lot. Like, four major games releasing in February as well. That's going to require more than one day's Well, that's her thing. She wants to win this conflict. This is definitely a burst. It makes sense. I'll agree with that sentiment. We kicked her in the shins a bunch of times, and now our families showed up to wreck Well, I mean, like I said, like, Horizon's still going to be huge. Elder Scroll, Elder Ring is going to be huge. Dying Light's going to be huge. And what was the other game? The only game this month that the rest of the Leadships is going to play is Dying Light. Like the one that they're, like, really excited for. just if you want to try and get those some of those passives early oh I lost ark lost play ark will be play massive play so, so those four yeah, games yeah lost ark those four as as you can because will be massive just on twitch in general i mean implicitly it increases the rate you're getting rewards and so on so i suspect just on twitch in general but uh doesn't aren't you going to play uh warhammer with us super easy so 
you know, uh, I've never played game. Warhammer before. Um, well, you could play like it's I've eight, always wanted it's, to play so with people, it, but I've never, I've it's never played eight it. player co-op now. Yeah, it's been moved to the core drop. Board, okay, how so late are you so going into the night with those streams? Oh my yeah, lord! Like all things in Path of Exile, you, you have to make an entire new schedule. So on a large scale, so we're not expecting people. <laughs> <to> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, use, I don't know. You know, they'll find something. Must that works be something well, that we could do. Thing, of course, yeah, the Bark games are going to be Warhammer and three quarters of them because Crusader Kings three Royal Courts, which I know you're kind of excited for, Vin. By the way, and just say I just got my. Oh, you know what I want to do with that? Yeah. No uh, spoilers, I chat. A question about co-op progression this time around. Has uh, anything kind of changed there? Can both players unlock their skill tree passes Yeah, I'm sad, though, because I wanted to do some dying kind of life, life but also I hate zombies. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> dying life's really good, but if the zombies do really get into your face and stuff, you probably wouldn't enjoy it. My understanding is that all of the stuff, is providing you're at the right quest state, all of the quest stuff... I'm going to go full Night Streamer. Party, well, my D&D, &D you know, after three years, is finally wrapping up. Um, and you'd normally get a bonus so I will have my Fridays back here in the yeah, next so, few weeks. Yeah, I'm unaware of any issues playing through in co-op, and that's something so we're trying to do. you probably see me hanging out with the guys a lot more. Want to yeah. Have caused problems for people who want to play through the entire game as a party, and that even applies to, like, Arch Nemesis and so on. We're trying to not repeat mistakes from the past where some leagues don't work in co-op. That's very promising. Yeah, you guys have been getting better with uh, co-op implementation of stuff, which is good because I've been co-oping every league start now, so it, it's good to see that. Do you imagine that even like boss fights and stuff will unlock co-op progression? Because I know some of that stuff has been turned. When does the new league start with this? It's potentially abusable. Yeah, we have to stop the abuse cases because we don't want to system where, date. like at the moment. Chat, for those of you that are taking notes, did they ever give a date for this? Or with friends who aren't in your instance just chatting to them while you're playing. This works. You can have a great experience. You know, there's no reason why you absolutely have to bring friends. February 4th? Of okay. course, it's good for social reasons. There you go, February 4th. Games that allow abuse get to this, this situation where you're either kind Look of chat. See, chat, this is why we streamers rely on you so much. This is why you're the smartest. This is why whenever we need legal advice, we come to you. This is why we need medical advice, we come to you. This why you are the best. Well for legitimate groups of players. Speaking of which, chat. Gotcha. What's a great uh, software to manage to bills? Your questions on this particular topic area. Uh, <laughs> to manage Zana bills. Yeah, I'm gonna help my dad because he's like trying to remember exiles, everything by brain. So exiles, so shouldn't oh. be staying I'm like, yeah. He you don't need to do that, Dad. There's programs that'll do this for you now. They'll tell you if you paid a bill or if your bill is late or if you need to do it. You know, process it all. Things out. So all will be revealed in the future. Well, more seriously, my bill manager is called Flynn. So yeah. Potential that we'll be seeing more in the future then. Um, I'm I'm gonna play a bit coy on that one. We'll see. I mean, we're not <laughs> just gonna forget about it. That's a that's a definite. No, I, the yes bills, can. Genji, not tax, I mean, not turbo like, tax. That's <laughs> something <laughs> different. <laughs> Why would you waste that? <laughs> mm -mm, all right, you need not say more. All right, we have a couple of viewers from chat. Uh, Dro Bob's asks, are Atlas passive allocations per character or account? These are per account. I think the only thing so is, per, uh, we call I, this per I league use... account, basically. So on your account, you have a separate allocation for hardcore versus the. I think, I think it's, it's called, it's called True Bill. I use it occasionally. Awesome. True Bill's different. True Bill like will scan your your bank account and tell you, oh, by the way, you forgot to cancel this thing. It's been charging three dollars for the last ten years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. This is so like, uh, I'm talking about like, you know, your water bill, electric bill, things that can monitor, you can organize your your stuff. Like, my dad's trying to do all that. I'm like looking at Quicken, um, may as well have it Home and Business, or uh, QuickBooks programs, you know. But Open Office has good yeah, graphs. The Conqueror stuff is pretty optional. Mm. Um, that's a, a good follow up then. Not, li not Lime, this asks, can we witness Conquerors? In all caps, by the way, they're excited about this. Caps. Can we witness conquerors? Yeah, you can. You can. Oh, okay, mm. that's interesting. So that means potentially a new uh, conqueror boss fight then for Maven. Ooh, ooh, okay. Um, what happens to the unique watchstones? Nobus asks. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we just eradicated. Um, and yeah, <laughs> all watchstones are gone. <laughs> So that, uh, that that strips a couple of things from Cyrus as well. Is there any like buff to his loot drops or anything to compensate, or just? Uh... <laughs> um, Cyrus still has good stuff, right? <laughs> he does. He does. Sure. <laughs> yeah. They're nodding like, of course he has good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, and another question, which I don't have a name for, seems like a lot of currency or bloat. Can you explain why currency was chosen as solutions this time around? Well, the key thing about currency is that it's tradable. 
and tradable means that if you do not know how to use it or you don't have a good opportunity to use then it, if you use tasty, it's no problem at all. Who does better? Hey, and so do you have you this can get spicy these stuff down in? You can get these Aldrich Indiana. Orbs and it's it's called uh, essentially just say it's I a Midwest thing, so I can never pronounce it. And get you, you, want, you hand someone peppers? a pile of this currency, they hand you a finished item. Mm, not that I'm aware of. How trade works. I've never okay, so that's only like a Chicago thing. Yeah, they put these little peppers on everything. It's fucking delicious, but also woo, it can get depending on how long it's been sitting in that brine, it can get real spicy. For players who do not want to engage in that for whatever reason, they can trade, and it also means if you've got some of one, but you actually yeah, chat it, spelling it in, in the channel does not help me at all. Um, I'm gonna this, put this in we'll your transition chat. Transition now into that whole uh, Eldritch Cropping. S puppet. Pronounce that. Have fun. Uh, but uh, it seems like Guy we're getting a little bit of uh, uh, I can't say it. Some harvest inspired right? things in these Eldritch currencies, particularly with the Chaos Orb, uh, rerolling prefixes or suffixes. I understand you, Tasty. I just don't know how I could function without it, dude. Mm -hmm. so it's less targeted than some harvest stuff, but it's kind of. I don't have the time. Line, so are you guys to, excited to, to, to move sit there and organize all that shit myself. I can't this do it. This is a safe way of us doing it. Um, it lets us have these powerful orbs. I mean, I should emphasize they're not easy to get, right? Like, you know, we're talking like special exalts here. They're obviously going to be rarer than regular exalts. And so yeah, I've, uh, I've it's trusted a, a CPA, way that we're really comfortable because you know? it does require some manipulation. <laughs> you go through my bank stuff. The tiers of the implicit mods and, um, you know, it's, it's, it's baking in a little bit of meta crafting, but done in a much more safe way that's not quite so combinable with other crazy stuff. So we're it more comfortable with when it gets this. caught, um, hurts it, a lot of people a lot outside of, of yourself. Explain. Yeah, I, I, what do you I mean? Get it. You kind of limit tested with harvest. My dream is to like have later you guys add a little step where you can like infuse these orbs with mm. specific target Maybe you know, modifier first. like fire or something like that by killing a specific high level boss or something like that. But anyway, I'm just I'm just uh, excited. <laughs> Anyways, a couple questions. Hey Burke, have you watched uh, any so of the new uh, uh, or major Boba Fett the stuff? New I haven't seen problems. the last so episode. From Apparently, I think it's a great one, but. Uh, so, like, can you break an item? My only criticism for like no, Boba no Fett as of right now, with We've all these episodes that I'm in, except for the last so one. That, um, as long as you're okay to replace the implicit that's that something, which is what you just hinted at, then it's generally what they the Boba Fett that they gave us in Mandalorian. Not the same Boba Fett we got in this show. It's a little bit more, you know, it's it's always helpful. Pain. <laughs> so this is a big well, contrast you know what? from like corruption. You know what the thing that pisses that me have. off the most? Uh, mm. Is this like a progression? I'm mad that they showed us what system? Boba Fett looks like. Oh, I'm not mad about so that. You already knew what he looked like. That you're able to oh well, okay. I know I'm making fun of people who were actually mad about that. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They showed what Boba Fett looks like. There's people that were so mad. There's some people you're never gonna please. I mean, it's it's how it is. But I think one thing I think is hilarious though is how. Boba Fett became popular because he looked cool and, and he was so a bounty hunter, right? Here, if you and so the they established lore about him through, through like books and everything else about him, the Mandalorian species and, and you his armor and everything. And, and then people got obsessed with Mandalorians and Mandalorians became this big deal in the Star Wars universe. And then slowly over time, they removed Boba Fett as a Mandalorian. And now he's just some guy with some armor. Uh, and uh, and now he's like he has nothing to do with you know like the character that really got people excited for Mandalorians and the whole idea behind it is no longer associated with Mandalorians you know I find that kind of humorous. Yeah, it does reroll. Mm. So okay. it's there are four currency items and mm. this is super complicated because the word tier like tier one implies the best right but when I say higher tier no, does that I'm referring uh, to like tier one being the lowest so we're just gonna use clearer language. There are six ranks of each mod. One They're trying to six. keep him different from the, the Mandalorian one, the show, you know. From the lowest currency item that drops Which, at all maps. You know, it's and fine. They the don't want him walking around with the helmet wearing all the time. I get it. Um, monsters and influenced maps, and the fourth one, I like which is the highest you can get from a currency item, drops from the big bosses. There are two tiers. Sorry, two I think it's probably the best character Star Wars has ever made. Be, um, rolled from all time. Those must only be wasn't. with an orb of conflict. Yeah, yeah. Uh, reply uh, one of these. Radica, he wasn't a Mandalorian. A they, 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 whatever they retconned the hell out of that. It. So you make it something that isn't the one you want. You do have to spam the currency a bit if you were looking for a specific mod. Yep. But there's no downside to that. It's not corrupting your item. Aside from the wealth investment that you're making in the item and yeah. the mm. ease of trading or finding them, it's entirely just a matter of sinking. Um, wealth into the item to get exactly what you're wanting and in return of course who has been your favorite powerful. but then once you have the mods that you're Star wanting the orb of conflict of will upgrade and lower them sure you may get a lowering that you don't want and that wastes some time or resources but that mod is then fixed in place as that type that's being upgraded i'll go or first jar jar pinks so you go ahead in practice it's a pretty fun system to actually play with with currency that's um 
That's interesting because that's a pretty different to a oh, I mean, Darth, Darth Vader is my favorite period. There's no real lose case where okay. your previous investment in the item is ruined, but rather the only risk is, well, how much do I have to spend to get the thing that I want this time mm. around? So is that kind of like an intentional decision then to have it be quite different in that way? It certainly is. It'll create a situation where you're lucky with your rank 3 mod that you get on an item. It's perfect. You love this one. You'd like a rank 4 version, though, but applying the rank 4 thing is potentially going to take a bunch of them to get the same mod, because, you know, the pool's got a bunch of diversity in there. Yeah. Now, of course, you could use an Orb of Conflict for this, because you've got basically mm. got a 50% chance that you get rank 4 out of it, and so people are going to have to make some mm. decisions. Mm. And that's what games <laughs> decisions <laughs> that's what games yeah. are <laughs> i mean honestly chat like we're kind of yeah, learning mandalorian like lore uh, as the show progresses so <laughs> a lot of us are can you uh, kind of learning this for the first time mandalorians are well, no. originally a species ah, okay so and, and then they became a uh, helmets boots gloves body armor, creed so apparently uh in the mandalorian so uh, I mean, they're kind of just may gradually expand in the future but for the time pulling being, stuff from comfortable with and extended universe and a lot of power so it's moshing it together. Probably going to be enough for now. <laughs> I love <laughs> learning about all of it, chase for and then having these. these I'm going to be a little offensive right now. Comparison table between a rare and unique. And then having these what, fucking uh, nerds to be considered now. Crawl out, out of the like, weeds to tell me what I'm enjoying is not that's supposed to be real. That's ideally. What I'll want, agree. That's that how it was written in this one comic or in this one book. I'll agree with this. I'll agree with Ven 100 on this. Star Wars fans can be a little toxic. Uh, Star Wars fans would be a little toxic. They're like mm -hmm. level. And uh, so basically, the justification of this is, 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 is item, it the usually pretty ridiculous. But uh, that's in maps because these are like, you know, um, flat I don't care what any Star Wars, Wars fan, uh, you know, I thought the extended universe, it was shit. But what we Sorry, this but it was. It got really shit. Right. Yeah. So Convoluted, technically apply dumb, item if you Vaughn were stupid, every storyline they did after all that yeah, shit was really dumb and I hated it. <laughs> yeah, so I'm glad all that shit's dead. It's not like, you know, insanity high. Yeah, okay. So I, I, I'm I glad, I'm like, people are like, we're irritated with yeah. Disney uh, deleted the extended so, universe. Uh, Good. <laughs> I'm glad they did. Don't use that stupid shit. I hated it. My understanding is that corrupting the item will remove the existing implicits and put the random corrupted one on. That's correct, mm. right, guys? Bark, yep. I don't know what the fuck the extended universe is. It so, was a yes, lot of you, bullshit. You there was some good stuff, like the Thawne trilogy, trilogy was great, and uh, Dark Empire was cool. But then it got, like, really dumb with how they're like, there's a species that's completely immune to the Force! <laughs> you know, it's like... Uh, We're gonna have a big war cool? about this, you know, and it's like uh, it's that's not Star Wars, dude. Nemesis like that's just was stupid really the shit. Only time we've actually worked on improving how rare monsters work. A very long time ago, we said hated it. Let's add some mods to the pool. Really hated it. And Arch Nemesis. And then there was a lot of dumb storylines, just a lot of stupid stuff, you know. Really I don't know. Cool name. Like, Chewie or no died to a freaking planet hit name or something. Right? Like what Someone the frick? I'm sorry, what? Kind of drifted out of the room and started typing it. It's a lot of stuff, stuff. I'm sorry, what? We all knew that was the name. Chewie go. A planet hits him. It sounds like it could be. We need people in the community to make or a moon or whatever to frick whatever. <laughs> there probably is one out there for sure, right? There's got to be. It's it's a solid name. Um, but I was like, well, I was like, um, maybe Chewie should have been so one of those species that was immune to planets. Monsters there? Because I see there's like yeah, exactly statue, right. And then there's a rare monster <laughs> chained to the statue. Mm -hmm. so the, I mean, nobody's the saying that the trilogy didn't suck. I mean, they, 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 I don't know so, what yeah. the hell Disney was thinking with that. When I don't know what area, the, in the world rares, well, they were doing the area, with that trilogy. So take your rares away and we, you, hey, we just got this $4 billion franchise and we're just going to like not make a cohesive story in a trilogy movies. Yeah, we're just going to wing it. We spawn more than you need. You can tell that the script were not written before, at the same time. No, they weren't. It was just like, I don't know who they were listening to on that, but that was so just spawned, stupid. Like, I can't remember the number. Yeah. Like six but I blame JJ, I blame Ryan Johnson, Johnson, I blame Kathleen and, Kennedy. Um, you, we well, like, for that, I but like seven. The area you'll probably encounter um, without having to. I've like got seven. Uh, only the first we've gotten way more good Star Wars than bad, though. If you think about it, fight that was that? Of course, we got way you know, more good Star Wars like content so far than we have bad from them. I mean, I'll admit. The I dropping of, of like having a 30 years later, here's Luke Skywalker, we're just going to blow this up, you know? <laughs> it's a pretty yeah, big bad, I'll admit. Over the last few years but I consider Rogue One to be one of the best Star Wars movies I have ever seen. Like, you know, 
Um, uh, it was horrible. That was the like worst one ever. The graphs of where players can move around the level, <laughs> right. and we can predict where solo, we level which I on a level to spawn stuff. You know, shit on and mirrors and so on. It's kind of I big didn't hate. It prevents backtracking, which is a big deal. Make I didn't hate solo. I liked it, loop. but uh, you know, I'm not saying it's the greatest movie yeah, ever. But it was a lot better than what I thought it was going to be. Question, the arch nemesis monster. Is Mandalorian is a masterpiece. I and disliked I Solo like because I didn't like the actor that cast. I didn't mind him. Arch nemesis means like he didn't feel like Solo. He was Solo enough. No way. They should have. They should have cast Jamie Costa, man. I don't know who that is. And don't forget the last season of Clone Wars is also a masterpiece. And now the the book of Boba Fett, Boba Fett. Though I don't have like I oh I hate it. I'm a little concerned. About the direction uh, oh, of Boba Fett. Do, they it's like, this is Boba thing. Fett. <laughs> this is like the Punisher. That's correct. They automatically go. They Star Wars. Go through the infantry. You know, this is a scary character. And they in, made him yes, terrifying in that Mandalorian episode where he came in. Where brutal. He brutalized say, those stormtroopers. Do you not look <laughs> made him super like scary. Scene, and then I don't know why the change of direction for Boba Fett in the crime syndicate world and why he's so... You Mello. don't have to find very many Way, of these we're area. really they're calm. I don't sure. understand what they're right. what's going what the direction is with that character right now. Didn't order pick up you don't Unless they're and then when I'm not you know we're not done yet. There's like three more episodes, right? So maps. And yes, that is too many. <laughs> we'll we'll see. These mods don't scale. You're finding like two. Right. Maybe three, but I'm wanting this to be two ideally. And so yes, you'll have to probably click twice per area. Maybe uh, the maybe is, they're just building it up. The space while large is not completely unlimited, right? Like there are cases where auto pick up would be annoying and so we've actually also identified the fact that we need to give more inventory space which we've which is <sighs> present in the footage you've seen where we've reduced it to an eight by eight inventory giving you plenty in all of our internal testing until like literally three days ago it was a five by five inventory having this awesome constraint thing where players are like frustrated at having to choose what they're carrying around and make decisions and we love decisions but at the end of the day, we realized that would not be popular. And so we've significantly increased the space up to 64 slots, which should be plenty. And if you're lucky, you'll find there may even be footage of the 5x5 inventory floating around the internet because the B-roll footage we gave to journalists earlier sure, this week Sure, Tiki, but, Bob, you know, in The Mandalorian, he didn't and behave so like that, and that's after the, the Sand people, so... ...the section of the live stream of the last minute with a new... I'll tell so you, you that he literally red-misted an assassin that walked there. away from him. <laughs> right? Yeah, but did he red-mist uh, every single look, one of the assassins? I, I normally, I often disagree Because that's what the real Boba Fett would have done. Wait a minute, what? What, he red-misted what? He shot case, somebody who was running away. Manually picking these up, given that of the six assassins that came to kill him, he shot one of them. Ooh, such so strong, so strong. And well, really like I said, like I haven't seen the latest episode, but I, you know, I did see. I have seen a little bit of like Boba Fett showing up, you know, in a couple, a couple scenes. But like, I don't know. Don't you just? I, I, does not, like, does nobody agree with me? Doesn't he seem like he's a little too calm for Boba Fett? I, I, I like his character personally because he's trying to roll through a different means. And I I'd like that as a character, the whether that's consistent with the higher recipes is even the original character. I can't really speak like to that. I'm not a know, huge Boba Fett guy. Like a lot of people you don't necessarily um, value will be very important to. But I can tell you that his recipes that character is much more calm. On, so it's not as obvious as they being good or careful, mods, but. There are certainly um, cases where you've already got. I guess what I'm saying is like he seems he like he's too forgiving like a bounty of people who uh, don't deserve it. Follow, follow you know, like he uh, walked so in to the, the to uh, like two clicks at the end of Mandalorian, he walked into the the hut palace <laughs> and just up just, just four walked four up and just four shot four mid fourteen. Just boom, blew his just killed him right there. Like no no shits given. You're gonna want to save up. You know what I'm saying? Like he just didn't give a shit. Boom, executed. And it's like in the Boba Fett show. The Those same kind of people, of like Bib Fortune, are getting some of the recipes. so many passes so, from him. There are cases where you're like, not. Why aren't they just being executed? Because, because he's tired of their shit. Well, you, you know what I mean? Like that. That's what I'm expecting. Not just a ragey, out of control par character. Through, I'm fine with a smart crime boss, but like some of these people every single, um, deserve to get shot. And he's not doing that. I want to work with them. I want to work with them. I'm going to try to go with respect instead of. You fear, you know, like okay, but you're in a crime syndicate. Fear matters. Okay. Um, if you for the people that want to hoard, if you want to hoard, can you pick them up, and put them in your regular inventory and stash? Them I don't know. Like I think you should hand they out must flowers. Stay there, and that's why we, <laughs> that's why we increase the count from 25 slots to 64. And this is ah. a surplus now. Oh. It's it's fine, but 
yes, people who wanted to hoard were having problems at 25, which is something we Again, it's just an observation on my part. Right, I'm not saying I, I don't like the show so or anything. I love I love the show. I love so every the action, the be, the scenes, the, so much of the stories. It's really good. I'm just kind of like, use, use the they build him up, but they get ready to do like a big deal. Like here soon, we got to get some crazy Boba Fett action, you know? That affects the item you get out. You know, when you're getting like... I'm already a little disappointed that it's not going to be a bounty hunting show. You know what I mean? Like related to the inputs and that kind of stuff. It's the same here. Oh, I guess I understand. They don't want to do Mandalorian and Boba Fett. And you don't want them to be the same show. And save that for maps because that's going to be a component to when I get really good uniques or something. I want more hut lore, man. So you want to get? Let's get the huts in this shit. You know, like I really want to see more huts. So if you find something in Act One and you spend it in late Act One or early Act Two, wait, you heard about the new show? It's called The Hut, right? Right. Right. I would love to see more hot stuff. Oh, yeah. The intention isn't that you just pick up a bunch through the campaign and when you hit maps, you've got 64 reagents. Good to go for the good uh, People that question the and private so league, 10 that, people yes, for 10 days is base and will much. cost $12, right, increasing okay. their cost um, by about 10 or 15 bucks per increase. Oh, okay. So they still that's not have bad. their own kind of like set rewards or is it just kind of basic as killing a rare normal? So if I wanted to get a league for 1,000 players, it would essentially cost me $1,000. Holy crap. You may choose to expend spare rewards bad. just releasing yeah, I guess so. and getting the stuff from them. Like, I find a thing that like gives we all, me a currency I mean, reward. I mean, think about it. Let's say we all the late shift, pick it up uh, and just use it on the next statue so I get a fight against the rewards. All, we all chip but you can't just tag the rares and, and fight yeah. them without giving yeah. them a property. It's not, that's not that, oh, wow. that's not so that crazy. So it really is potentially in every other map sort of situation or stockpile for a while and then blast them for 10 maps. A lot of... Because the you're getting even that interesting. Area, you're not that interesting, are totally Moogles! Fine with two. Like, that's what you're kind of wanting. What huts are not even that interesting. interesting. How dare you? They're just the biggest crime syndicate in all of you Star Wars. But okay, fine. We don't just assume the players can handle a four fight, right? Like, that's quite tricky. You want to have a look at what type of monster not pay attention to them at all. You know what? Sith, too. And the Jedi are not interesting either. Rather than, you know, necessarily a big beast or whatever. I think with all the four heads in mm. chat, everyone can handle the four fight, but we'll see. <laughs> sorry. I'm actually really glad that they're not doing any Jedi uh, stuff. Uh, though Ahsoka series is going to be... Oh. He's like, still my beating heart. Ahsoka's getting her full series. <laughs> oh my gosh. I, I, am I... Okay, am I the only one that's so really excited for, for Obi-Wan? No, you're not. Everyone's excited, but like... I, uh, like, let's put it this way. Like, the new trilogy should have been about Ahsoka. Then there is a Instead of Ray, it should have been Ahsoka. Like, imagine that. Like, Ahsoka getting, window, you know, justice for Anakin at the end in a, in a final fight with Palpatine would have been so more, cool. Um, significant if the recipe is alive. Oh, or they could have. Oh, man. Recipe. What could have been? And so, basically, as long as you just. Question say, oh, Who's I've got Ahsoka? Some stuff I can do, you'll work she's, uh, out she was. Like, she was. A, in in Clone Wars, she's introduced as the most annoying, horrible character. And then, over the course of, like, multiple seasons, she becomes one of the greatest characters they ever designed. Character growth, storyline, um, just it was a beautiful so be, journey for this character. She is Anakin's Padawan. Want, but you won't need to. The uh, the Jedi during during the Clone Wars, they assign him a Padawan because they're hoping that it reels him in. Because he's so getting more and more aggressive with his battles and stuff and how he behaves. So they're like, well, if he gets a Padawan to train, that'll help him. It didn't. <laughs> it just made him more emotional because he had to protect his Padawan. One and like up four, she became so vital to his uh, it's, it's hard to, to his get, life, you know. That's the thing that you put together by maps and um, to occasionally. Okay. And that does some really But, uh, you know, her so storyline is just and fight it and get those really rewards, cool and just really beautiful. It's just like how she has this rewards. coming of age storyline that you follow really along. Difficult. And, and um, you know, gives you a giant pile she of fights with two lightsabers like and you know she eventually you know, combinatorial with the I mean it's a it's big storyline big storyline there's a whole bunch of shit that happens that you can okay potentially recipe what color is her lightsaber I think they're white yep. years of modifiers Sorry, it sounds it's, like that goes like 4D or something. To some extent, we've understated well, the recipe okay, maybe I Because make, the recipe climbing is what the whole league is meant to be about. Except that a lot really of the fun is just doing Jedi fights and combining fans. stuff. She was in recipes. Mandalorian. Like, to some extent, the make yeah, your own I know, I know who she is. Okay. the design team put together. I, I know who she is. I don't know who she is. I've never watched any of the... I have seen... Burke, you ready for my knowledge on Star Wars? I've seen every Star Wars movie there is. That's in the end, then? Because kind of the... Yeah, like, she's literally... Own Wars. I've never watched. I've never read a comic. I've never read any of the books. None of that. That's why when you watch that, you gotta if you go back and watch that episode with her um, in Mandalorian, like when she's talking, like she's alluding to Anakin a lot because she 
good was um, he ones was his Padawan versus just the regular ones. Mm. I'm wondering she okay. she saw Padawan how he slowly in getting random recipes. In, in Clone Wars, in, in the movies, they make Anakin's, Anakin's fall the, pretty the quick. The items themselves look more elaborate because they you know limited by time. Really but really if really you watch the Clone Wars, it, it's it, literally they though it's a cartoon that you can watch with your kids. There's some dark ass moments in that cartoon. It'll be pretty obvious. They show his fall very subtly happening and getting greater and greater over time, like. You know he's in. A, he's getting frustrated so, with the Jedi because the he wants to like, get over there and here, save that city from those robots. But bureaucratic bullshit is making him not be able to do that. The supplementary party members. So he gets very frustrated. Their own drops. Which and it has is their why own the dark system of trying to force it so that they're not getting too many per area, but they're still getting some. So I maintain that the Jedi Order was evil and the Sith are receiving drops as they play through. I agree with this assessment. And the Empire was good. Any of the players can do a recipe. But it's you know, like, so and Anakin starts cutting corners, like, man, this guy won't tell us what we want to know. This you know, people's lives are on the line, and the, the Jedi are not going to just let me uh, how the league plays intentionally. interrogate him, so I'll just force choke him just a little bit. Just a little bit. Who mm -hmm. the not too much. If you just a little bit. It's not a big deal. Let me just choke him just a little bit. You know, like, he does stuff like that. Cutting and corners constantly, and he gets more and more frustrated with the Jedi, and specific mod and you know what happens after that? that drop from the combination we put and the Jedi, you know, uh, Mace Window, and then they uh, they, they don't they don't trust him, you know, because the area, you he's so your out you there with his so powers and stuff. He's party, more loosey goosey kind of with it. Who's doing mm -hmm. large recipes? Um, <coughs> and it works yeah. pretty well. Mm. Oh, Luke definitely did too. Yeah, but I don't know. Um, so. But this would have been cool. Imagine happen, Luke and Ahsoka meeting. Oh. Place, right? Any player that is possible mods in this so universe, though. Yeah, still still have that. Ahead of you, <laughs> then, then it's their instance in terms of putting mods then in. Then they've locked it in. That's on you. That's yeah. very different how it normally works. This is basically through playtesting where we want to make sure that it's done in a way that's fair. And unfortunately, the problem mm. is well, if you have a system where is completely I can put in heart. Like, I've talked about Star Wars. This is where we are. I guess uh, I'm probably going to hop off here because I got to go get something to eat. Ow! Okay. Well, go get your food. I'm probably going to go work on the next mod overview because I want to release it. Okay. Um, all right, buddy. No, well, thanks. Thanks well, for hanging out with hanging me. Out. Yeah. I don't mind talking Star Wars all the time. Listen, I'm going to watch all the Clone Wars now, but only because you specifically have recommended it. Well, the Clone Wars are going to be great. Um, and then, like, they... Ugh. So like that first season, you kind of got to get through, you know, but it's, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't recommend skipping anything. I'm not a, uh, I'm not, I'm not pro skipping anything. You either watch it all or you don't. Um, but that first season is kind of a little rough. And then after that, they kind of find their stride, you know, mm -hmm. like I said, some of those episodes are a little derpy, like the B Jar Jar Binks ones, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, oh, but like, no. it's like some of those episodes are obviously catered to our children, but um, a lot of those episodes are also like, geez, when they like have that fight on some of those planets, like, geez, like they, they, they bring a flamethrower and they burn them all death. Like, gosh, damn. I'm sorry. What? Yeah. Spoiler. Like they, they do some, like this is a cartoon and they just like burn and shit. I'm going to watch it. Yeah. Oh, that's now I just ruined the whole series for you. Now I might as well not watch it. Might as well oh, not watch well. it now. Oh, yes. Chat's right. It is vital. McCory, post that in Ven's chat. There is a what? Star Wars Clone Wars chronological episode order to watch it in. Now, you're going to be jumping around because for some reason, the first three seasons, they're like, this first episode... What? What? Why wouldn't I just watch it? Like, why wouldn't I just press play? Because they do something stupid. Like, there's no one who's going to... Everybody will tell you to do this, okay? To watch it in the chronological order. For some reason, when they started it, they were like, we were going to have this episode on this planet in episode four, right? And we're going to conclude that episode on season three. Hey, <laughs> it doesn't make sense. And there's no continuity that gets broken without it. It's not like watching the MCU and, and, and uh, watching it in release order for the first time is ideal. And then you can watch it in chronological order after that. This is different. This is like, they just did weird shit. And we don't know why. It doesn't have any bearing on the story. It is just weird. You'll, you'll just be left there going, I thought we were on this planet. Why are we here now? 
and they don't okay, explain so, why or anything. So I need to watch. First off, I'm confused because okay, wow. Uh, I need to watch episode 216 first. Yes. What? Yes. And it doesn't. What? It it like it. You have to do it this way, dude. It is so confusing if you don't. Okay. More importantly. Why does it say that the final episode I need to watch is episode 712? How many episodes are there? That's season. Seven is season. And then there's not 700 episodes. Oh, so it's season seven, episode 12. Exactly. Oh, okay. So I need to watch season two, episode 16. Okay. Okay. They should have labeled that a little bit better. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Highly recommend you watch it in that chronological order. It just, you know, I'm pretty sure there's people in chat that will back me up. And yeah, it just, I don't, we don't know why they did it this way. It's just weird. Mac, DM this to me so I actually watch it. McCory okay. is going to post it in your chat. Okay. Yeah, I, ha I have it up right now. I just don't have it linked to me. Mac, I'm just going to DM this to you so I can be like, hey, Mac, where's that? Oh, I DM'd it to you already. Here it is. Thanks, Mac. Mac has been screaming at me for about four years to watch the Clone Wars, and I just meme on how it's probably stupid. You're welcome, Mac. But I will watch it now that my good friend Burke Black has recommended. <laughs> 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 All right, buddy. Go enjoy your food. I'm going to go do things. All right. Love I'll see you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. All right, chat. Uh, I'll be back tonight. Oh, the battles are great in Clone Wars. I think it's a lot of fun. Talking about Star Wars during the sponsor stream. Sponsor stream's been over, dude. It, it was only 30 minutes. Y'all have a great night. Oh, great afternoon. I'll see you tonight, okay? Alright, uh, let's go raid Vin. Were there drops on for this, by the way? Were you getting drops this whole time? Yes, good, good, good. Just wanted to make sure. Whatever happened to this chat spam of thanks, Burke Black, for the drop? Whatever happened to that? Did they, did they take that away? I, was, I always liked that because I knew that uh, people were getting drops. And I was like, oh, good, it's working. Uh, just follow me on Twitter. I'll, I'll make an announcement for it, Belgium. I, I just got to find the right time to do it. And, uh, you know, I'll do my best. It's, you know, I know, I know there's stragglers. Like, I already, I already, the vast majority of my audience got their drop for the, for Rome. So, I'll just do my best for, uh, and I got, like, I got a ton of stuff to do. It's going to be such a busy time coming up. So, I just got to uh, get this in here somehow. I think it's like three hours, right? So yeah, to get all the drops. I know, I know. Everybody wants my flag symbol, so I'm going to try to figure it out. Bye.